You know, I don't really like to get into personal matters on the podcast. I don't dive into personal things too much. No? But I had, I had an interesting situation today at work. Yeah? A portly young man walked up to me today at work and asked me the most profound, deeply philosophical question I've ever been asked. Spencer, have you ever been asked such a question that it it, it makes you reflect on your whole life? Uh, no. I don't like to think about those things. Well, this young gentleman... He looked me in the eyes. Square in the eyes? Square in the eyes. His words as powerful as a jackhammer. And he said, Do you want to beat Igglebird and Humperdinck to death with a sack of wet yams? Surge! Tap the sack. <laughs> so it was more like a statement and not necessarily a, like a question. The first part's oh, a yeah, question. I guess Do you yeah. want to beat Igglebird and Humperdinck to death with a sack of wet yams? Yeah. And the answer is no. But if I had Surge, I might. I just might. If I, if I had surge, I might be inclined to, sir. I might just fucking do that. My favorite thing about the surge bit that everyone's going to hate after a couple months of this is the fucking zap. The, the surge. I renamed that to the surge noise because before it was like sci-fi gun or something yeah. I named it, but now it's just the, sur- the surge. Surge. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's, just, like it's like a mic drop. You know, I always just... I always just download and delete the new episodes when they come out, you know. Mm-hmm. But I might have to do- I might have to download, listen to the first two minutes, and then delete. Whenever you know the surge bits, you yeah, know, that's, that's the like- last one was at the end. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna just always shake it up. So you have to you have to hunt for those if you people so, really are interested in the, the surge. It might be at the beginning. It might be at the end. It might be in the in the middle of a dead serious interview with a guest. <laughs> We might be talking to Stephen King, and then I'll be like, hey, Stephen, I have a question for you. (laughs) Do you want to beat the Pope to death? And then just like, what? Why is it always beating somebody to death? (sighs) Could you imagine a guest who never listened to our show, and then we just bust it? Like, even if we had, like, Nicholas Obergon back on, and we just busted out, sir. (laughs) He'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? And he's English, so he might not even know what sir is. No, no, no (laughs) idea. Oh man! I, I I probably I like to think that if he ever goes back and listen to these these new episodes after him, be like, oh, I wonder how those those good chaps are doing. And he's just like, oh, they they mm. went down the wrong road in life. Got addicted to surge, <laughs> started murdering <laughs> people. Surge life. <laughs> I promise you, folks. Not every surge slogan is going to be murder of a celebrity. We'll, we'll, we'll ask different questions, but Engelberg Humperdinck for some reason stuck in my mind. See, I was kind of, I was kind of surprised it wasn't Fagerbad or Fingerbad or Fingerbad for um your uh, Bill Fagerback. Yeah. Oh, we can't beat Bill Fagerback. That that would just be fucking rude. If anything, he's gonna be a guest on the show one day. <laughs> Hey there, you filthy animals. This is the Drunk Pen Writing Podcast. You are listening to it. I'm your host, Caleb Jane. With me today, Spencer of the Carolina Crack Whore Church. Mm. Crack Whore this week. Crack Whore. Yeah, I figure next month's going to be all spooky themed uh, things. So we got one more week. Okay. So you could be a Crack Whore for her. Uh, yeah, if I must. If yeah, I must. If you must. Today, we are talking about stories. Specifically, seven types of stories. I, I don't remember if we covered this before, but because we talked about like the hero journey and things, but I don't think we've ever really talked about the different types of stories. I know we've brought up the fact that there's only so many kind of stories that you can tell mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to your writing. So, you know, don't try to beat yourself up too much if you can't necessarily think of something too original. But like you said, I don't think we've ever actually dived into what those yeah. stories are. Well, today's article comes from ad week ad, that seems like a that makes sense considering what happened as soon as i went to their page got an ad i like three of them well damn uh this was written by one tim nudd in 2012 i'd imagine things didn't change too much they don't think they added another story hmm. i'm gonna hop right into the list here number one overcoming the monster This type of story goes back through Beowulf to David and Goliath, and surely a lot further than that. It's the classic underdog story. Ad examples include Apple's attack on... Whatever. Um, 
to fucking overcoming a monster story. Doesn't always have to be a monster, obviously, David and Goliath. Goliath is just a really big man with a, you know, a little bit of a growth disorder. And then uh, Beowulf is a monster, I guess, right? You're a big Beowulf guy, aren't you? Yeah, I, uh, I read Beowulf back it, in high school. Yeah, I don't remember reading Beowulf. This is one of the most basic movie, especially with like the comic book hero movie so popular now. It's like one of the most basic storylines. Yeah. So you gotta overcome the big bad. I don't really know if there's much to, you'd have to explain on that one, really. I mean, what's your, what's your favorite example of uh, overcoming a monster? Overcoming a monster. I would say it would have to be one where the odds are very stacked, or really stacked against the protagonist, and maybe the whole story is like, not just leading up to the final battle, like most movies and stuff are, but um, like you don't think the hero's gonna win. Like if you, cause everyone knows the hero's gonna yeah. win, but if you can make it so you still think well, he might can, lose, if you can actually put that doubt in the yeah. in the reader's or viewer's mind, is that's the trick. It's very rare, and one of the best ways to do that is have the big bad be somebody like almost like a Thanos. Well, maybe not so much like a Thanos. Uh, Joker, maybe like someone that the audience also likes. Yeah. So, because if you, even though he could be a horrible, you know, the the villain could be horrible. If you kind of like the villain, you always a small part of you kind of roots for that villain. Yeah. So that's when it gets interesting. Well, I mean, as the saying goes, uh, every villain is the hero of their own story. Yes. So that is true. Uh, I can't really think of any. Maybe like Watchmen. Because that was one of those ones that was kind of vague. Because the hero, the villain was a hero at one time, Ozymandias. Yeah. And technically what he did was still saving the world. But he did it in an awful, horrible way. I think like... Um, but the team leading up to that are trying to catch him and stop him. And technically they didn't actually win, but then humanity still won. That's why it was interesting. What I like about that... With those kind of things, and I don't know, I doubt that they might mention this kind of thing later on in the list, but um, when you kind of take that and you kind of turn on on its head a little bit, and you do stuff like Swamp Thing, mm-hmm. to where, like, the mon- like, the good guy looks like the monster, especially with, like, with, like, uh, Swamp Thing, a lot of times, um, he's dealing with things on, like, a global like level that like no other like not like a thing that superman can't like you know what i mean deal with or or anything like that you know just like things that actually affect the planet you know Mm. and just being surrounded like with those kind of like those kind of odds and stuff like that and where your good guy looks like this hideous like swamp creature you know it's almost and, and and it's a lot of like that also gets played on a lot of like is Swamp Thing just this thing or is Swamp Thing still Alice Ha oh, I forget his last name. Well you know the, the, the guy that he yeah. was beforehand or is he not even that anymore? Like you know what I mean? It played, you know, a good Swamp Thing story plays with all that kind of goodness. Yeah, it's kind of a discussion on humanity as well. Number two, rebirth. A story of renewal. It's a Wonderful Life is a prime example from the movies. Brands telling stories of renewal include Gatorade, whose replay campaign gave aging members of high school sports teams. I don't know what that is. I would use, like, obviously everyone's the rise of the phoenix, you know. Yeah. Rise from the ashes. That's another pivotal plot point in most stories. There's always some kind of uh, rebirth. I mean, it's not always extreme, like a character dying and then coming back. It could be something as uh, the character fails and then overcomes that failure and succeeds. It would be a more human example of that. It's not like superhero oriented. Maybe like a Rocky type of story where the protagonist is kind of a failure, at least to himself. And everyone looks upon the protagonist as someone who isn't really special or any by any means. And it's about overcoming the obstacles, whether they're obstacles that you've created or just circumstances that you have to fight through. And then obviously, like the end of Rocky, he didn't even win, but he won for himself. Yeah. So that was the rebirth. It was was a personal win. Yeah, which was what was important to him because it has to be important to the character. And I use that as an example because that's not as black as white as somebody dying and coming back or one of those types of deals. And I always like, 
the Rocky story because he, he didn't win, but he still won. Yeah. Because it, when it comes down to it, you want your character not just relatable, but you want your character to be more realistic. Your character is not always going to win. Yeah. If they're realistic, that means they can still do better than what they were before, and that's still success. Versus in, like, a Marvel movie, you know, if they don't kill Thanos, then everybody dies. Yeah. There is no gray area. You can't just, well, we kind of killed Thanos, like, a little bit. So the only a part of the population, twenty five percent of the population, died instead of half. Well, just even the um, the, the whole rebirth that is, you know, at the end of the one movie they killed off like half of everything, but by the end of the next one there was a re- everybody came back. There was you mm-hmm. know a rebirth. They kept or, trying. Yeah, they didn't give up. You can never give up, Spencer. Once you give up, you end up like us. No, <laughs> you end up hosting a podcast. Where you talk about Surge for... Surge! <laughs> <laughs> Number three, and this is one of the oldest ones, a quest. Oh, god damn. The goddamn quest. Not a good time to bring up quests. Why? Because the funny we just... Well, I just got done reading King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> a motherfucker said, quest, adventuring, damsel, um, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> I swear, like, every fifth word's the same word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that, that's Steinbeck's King Arthur, by the way, folks. I I can't tell you the regular King Arthur. I'm assuming it probably does use a damsel even more. Yeah. Which is saying something, because you'd think, like, going into this, we're like, oh, well, yeah, obviously the the original author book stories would be hard to read, but uh, Steinbeck's doing them. It should be fine. It should be great. It should be good. <laughs> that made me very upset, because it's the only Steinbeck book I felt bored reading, because I really like Steinbeck. And I was just like, I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, he's just retelling the Arthur story, so I guess there's not too much he was... Unlike a, like a Neil Gaiman, who, when he does Myths and Legends, he kind of... uh doesn't reinvent them necessarily, but he adds his own. Like, he creates almost yeah. a fictional world using that stuff, like a American Gods type of deal, versus Steinbeck, who's just retelling the stories and just, like, kind of fleshing them out more. But uh, the quest would be, like, your Lord of the Rings type of deal. Yep. Um, that's, like, one of the most famous ones. Or, the- or any, um, you know, you see, like, on a lot of uh, TV shows or, or movies where there's a, you know, there's a mission. There's a mission that needs to be done, or else a bad thing's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's basically a new age quest. Yeah, and with most quest stories, it's almost as if, at least in my opinion, the important thing isn't necessarily how it ends. It's the not journey. generic, but the journey. Yeah. Um, not the destination, the journey. That's that's kind of how it is with the quest. Like the Lord of the Rings, you you're seeing them fucking. Well, I, I thought those were kind of boring with the talking everything's walking and talking but you know got talking trees and orcs and all that shit but you know they're always fucking fighting some kind of monster shit while they're walking i don't know maybe like a never-ending story would be a better example of that like a more fun one i I can't say like i know a lot of people love lord of the rings i just i wasn't i watched them you know what i don't even really think i i I might have watched the first one at school one year but I never, I don't know. so long. Yeah, and I never really watched the other one. I was thinking about if I ever got to the point where I read everything and there was nothing else ever to read again, maybe cracking open one of those books, <laughs> but... The books are way different, apparently. If you want to talk about just Journey, and I think the books are just really deep into the lore. Um, but yeah, anyway, your typical Journey story is just, you're, you're fucking, it's not just point A to Z, it's everything in between. And then, you know, normally there's, you know, you have the tropes of, like, you know, normally there's at least a sacrifice, or, you Yeah, know. somebody dies, there's a woman involved at some point, or a love interest, maybe, or a princess, or it depends what type of story you're telling. When you go with the, the quest story, too, you, uh, I don't even want to talk about the quest story anymore, piss me off. Fucking that king! I got stuck on that dumb King Arthur too. I was like, God, I'm fucking. Uh, I was never a big quest guy. This goes back to my dislike for big series. Like, I don't want to keep reading, and I like, I well, do like an ending. It was just the way that how much it, the word got used and like how they used it. Like, I'm gonna go questing now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I'm gonna go out questing. What? You're just mm-hmm. running through the woods. You're gonna what now? I'm gonna quest. I'm gonna start saying that. I'm gonna go whenever I go like go pick up some food or something. I'm gonna go questing now. I'm gonna go out on a quest. 
Because when you think you're going questing, that means it's not just, oh, I got to go to that castle and storm it. It's, well, I got to go on a quest. Like, what? I thought you were storming a castle. Yeah, but I don't know how long it's going to take me to get there. There's a bunch of shit out in those woods. And there's a thing about a quest. It's like, okay, well, what is your quest? I don't know yet, but it's going to be right. It's going to be fucking great. Just hopefully I don't run into no bitch from the lake. (laughs) It's all magical and yells at me and a fucking King Arthur dude. Merlin gets stuck in a big rock. What a crock. As 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 to not turn this episode into that, there is another author thing I want to talk to you about off podcast. Just just to Alright. Let's move on from the fucking quest. Journey and Return is number four. You a, think those almost kinda Well, that's why I'm gonna read this one because it does sound like the exact same thing. A story about transformation through travel and homecoming. The Wizard of Oz and Where the Wild Things Are are both journey and return stories. Corona is one of the brands that also encourages a trip. Urge- this is That's why it's ad week, because every that's why I'm trying to read these, and it just keeps fucking throwing ads at yeah. me. The next one, it's uh, Rags to Riches. It says, oh, in literature, Charles Dickens and Cinderella in the movie Train Places. In ads, Chrysler, which they always yeah. throw an ad in there. I don't give a fuck. I'm not reading these. Folks, I'm not putting this in the show notes either. This article's trash. They got the basics, and but the article, trash. At least they're up front, you know, that you're going yeah. to add Weekly's website. I guess I should have known better. So what's the difference between journey and return? Well, I'm thinking maybe the journey and the return is kind of like the... Well, then wouldn't the fucking Lord of the Rings be a journey and return? Because they well, end up back in the Shire. Well, I'm thinking maybe the journey and the return is like Batman's parents get killed. He goes off for like 10 years to do his training. And then he comes back, and he's like, bat. You know what I mean? Maybe that's that going on. Um, not necessarily uh, like a quest to do a thing, but like I have to. I I think the, the, the most clear one I can think of is like some kind of training thing, or like uh, montage, or like a you know like a somebody needs to learn how to fence, or you know, be a good sword fighter. So they track down the greatest sword fighter, and you know. Train underneath him for 10 years until he's good and he can finally have his revenge on the guy who looked at his wife funny. And I feel like the quest could be, say, using Lord of the Rings again, one of the characters who doesn't make it to the end because he yeah. dies, like the one who sacrifices himself or something. Mm. That could be the quest, but then the journey would be Frodo and Sam who do the yeah. after in the Shire, like when they, mm. you know, when they had the, the, that was about sexual relations between those two, right? I assume so. I've seen that end scene, and I remember thinking, mm-hmm. those guys are <laughs> they are putting fingers in each other's <laughs> butts. <laughs> little hobbit fingers. Ew, who would want a hobbit? Like, they're little, and they got big feet. Well, was there any female hobbits? I didn't see any. Lots of wizards. Did they, like, do, like, hobbits lay eggs or something? <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't read Lord of the Rings. I, I don't what about they did? Nobody did. <laughs> just lay eggs. Here's a more interesting one than both of those. The Rags to Riches story. In literature, Charles Dickens and Cinderella, um, not reading the ad, mm. I would say like a modern adaptation would be like a slumdog millionaire. Yeah. You know, somebody, it's pretty self-explanatory. You come from a, going back to Great Expectations, which, oh boy, he just said Charles Dickens. It's like Charles Dickens, that's all he writes about. But at Great Expectations, yeah, Pip, he was a little fucking poor kid whatever, welding or something that his fucking dad, stepdad, what, I don't know, a bunch of nonsense. Um, but then he ends up getting, you know, he, he's like pretty much a made man. But then he finds out the made man's a criminal and he stole his money and there's a bunch of stuff that happens and it's a long ass book. But anyway, the kid, he gets fucking rich. But then by the end, he doesn't want to be rich, really. See, this is where, this is where we differ because I merely just, I merely go, uh, go to Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds? <laughs> From the ra- rags to riches. Except he wasn't really, like, you know, looking for it. You know what I mean? It was like, a, you know, it wasn't something he was, um... Mr. Stuck. Deeds, Longfellow Deeds, was not starving in, in the streets. He didn't come yeah. from abject poverty. He worked at, like, a pizza shop or something. Yeah. Like he wasn't... That's a bad example. Stop it. Well, you get rich, though. Stop it. You, you get did, the second half. Yeah, but you could be middle class and then get rich. That's not rags maybe to riches. That's, maybe that's another story. Middle class to riches. Yeah, uh, that's a... Write that story. It's, it's, it's cloth. Instead of rags to riches, it's cloth to, to riches. Rags to riches, cloth to riches. I don't care if it's silk fucking robes to riches. Stupid. So yeah, that's a fucking tried and true story trope, I guess. Six. This one goes back to the Shakespearean days. 
Romeo and Juliet, probably everything else he wrote. Tragedy. A good tragedy. Also, I feel like most of these things could be in the same story. Oh, yeah. You could have a fucking hobbit that was born dirt poor, and then he becomes rich as he quest, and then he returns home. But yeah, tragedy's pretty much where it fucking ends with somebody croaking. Or, I don't know. Is that what fucking everything's tragedy? Is there an upbeat tragedy? Maybe somebody... That would go back to sacrifice, maybe, or somebody somebody dies, but they had, like, uh, a tumor in their head or something for the whole book, so they wanted to die anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know. Seven. Comedy. This is the other side of tragedy. Is there anything from... Uh, have we read... Would you consider the hike a comedy? Or would you consider that a quest? Or would you consider... I guess that was more of a journey in return. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I would say that. And a comedy. Yeah, um... I don't know the rules of a... Co- this. I'm sorry, folks, that we're fucking so terrible at this. This article does not give any good definitions of anything here. I mean, I would put it in a comic kind of category because there were parts that I laughed and, like, you know, and thought were funny... But I don't know if those are always necessary. Because like, it's always hard, too, for me to when it comes to talking about comedy or things that are funny. Because I find a lot of things funny. A lot of things that I shouldn't find funny or that are inappropriate that I shouldn't find funny tend to tickle my funny bone, you know? Like dead kittens? Not dead kittens. That's horrible, Spencer. Why do you think dead kittens are funny? I didn't say dead kittens. I said dead kittens are not funny. <laughs> <laughs> we agree to disagree. I don't think dead kittens are funny at all. You think they're hilarious. <laughs> That's not <laughs> funny. Because you're laughing. No, dead kittens are... I like kittens. I don't want to see them dead. Why are you talking about dead kittens, man? Uh, you, you really brought this show to a screeching halt. brought up the dead kittens. I didn't know such a thing. Folks, if you want to... I was just PETA, talking about... Any listeners who are involved in PETA, if you want to send your hate mail, send it to spencerchurch69boner.gov. I can't think of any, like, good comedy books I've read, really. Well, Hitchhiker's com- Guide, maybe? I say, well, comedy is, like, a harder thing to pull off in, like, a novel form. Yeah, you have to be really good. And usually it's, um... Dialogue-related, I Yeah, would. and more satire. Like, an Oscar Wilde Cause type like, of deal. Because even, like, with, like, the, um, like, with comics and stuff, you have that visual aid yeah. to help... Make a th- like a thing that somebody says to be funny, or what you know, the artist can make a, the character have a funny face or do like a funny movement or something, you know. Or the old pie in the face, or the old pie in the face. If you just say you threw a pie in his face, that's not funny. If you see him throw the pie in the face, that's still not funny, but at least you can see it. Well, it's like, uh, you know, the with the comedy, like it's even so much different just from like spoken. To 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 written or from hearing to reading, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. It it changes that so much because it's the the way you can say it, the say you know what I mean, the way you pronounce the words, the you know a pause somewhere. You know it's really hard to pull off, but when it's done well, it's great. A comedic tragedy. Yeah, I I think a death to Smoochie, but I don't even remember if that was a tragedy. That was like I've seen that a long time ago. I thought that was a funny movie, though. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I like that. I remember. But there are a lot of movies, uh, specifically that, or like a dark comedy. Yeah, they're funny throughout, but then maybe the end is just hits you like a gut punch, like it's kind of more serious. Like Mr. Deeds. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> killed kittens in Mr. Deeds. So I don't know why you think it's so funny. <laughs> is it because he had a black foot <laughs> from like uh, frostbite or whatever? The gross foot? No. Dead kittens aside. I... Why do you keep on bringing up the cats, man? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm writing a story right now. No, I actually listened to that Myth and Legends podcast today. One of the episodes was about this kid who couldn't stop writing or drawing cats. And then they end up saving his life. The cats that he drew? Yeah. Huh. They, they came to life and killed a goblin. It's very interesting. Anyway, folks, um, I know that... Oh, <laughs> that was a super helpful article we just covered. I found a bunch more articles that covered verbatim that exact same thing just without the ads yeah. thrown in. <laughs> what a weird choice. Like, who's reading that for knowledge where they just throw in Corona ads and Chrysler ads yeah. in the middle of, like, fucking tack it on to the end maybe, but don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't now, like the guy who wrote would, that. Um, where would you put things like a, like a horror 
Because that's not, like, you, it'd probably just go in the tragedy. Depends what kind of horror story you're telling, I guess. Because you could also kind of, like, depending on how you do it, you could have, like, a like a quest horror movie or, like, a um, the journey in return kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? If yeah. it's, like, you know, if the... You know, you're being chased down by Freddy or Jason or something, like, you know what I mean? And you're... A lot of horror movies have the rebirth. Yeah. And usually there is... And would those be... Uh, like, a, you... the monster... I'm gonna say, yeah, would you... Can, the, the David versus Goliath kinda? Yeah, it's usually... There's a, a big bad in most horrors that have... That's an obstacle that has to be overcome, so it's like a rebirth slash... Uh, fighting the monster, whatever that one was. I don't know if it would be ever considered a journey, though. Yeah, could you do a quest horror? Like, it'd be just everything's well, awful. Because, well, wouldn't you almost kind of, like, um, like, not a quest, but, like, um, the journey thing, like, like, the Saw, the Saw movies, because they're, like, you know, Going through these elaborate mazes and there's... See, I feel like that's just more of fucking overcoming the monster. Maybe. I don't know. That's that's a, that's, a, that's the deep waters of horror that I never really thought about. I guess when it comes to genre fiction, I usually don't think about in terms of what kind of story it is. I just read the story. Unless it's Lord of the Rings, then I'm like, oh, that's a quest. <laughs> or a fucking King Arthur. It's just automatic. Questing. I'm going questing. I really forgot about a lot of King Arthur, but just because I I end up blanking it out after I finished, I was like, I don't want to read this no more. Does it make you like? Uh, Cause like I never had a problem with like the whole lopping thing before, lopping or larping, that, lopping, whatever. Um, but now I kind of almost like just because of King Arthur, I kind of look look down at it a little bit more. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Why? Because it's like almost like the same shit, like <laughs> questing. Yeah, questing with your fucking. You got the unsleeved, unsleeved your sword, and you know what I mean, and just that you got your your sheared, sheared and shit. So not only have you offended the LARPing community that listens to our podcast, but you've also ostracized the cat community, yeah. the cat owner community. Our two biggest, our two biggest fucking shut-ins that listen to us. Oh man, now the shut-ins are gonna <laughs> yeah. just dig a hole. And everybody, everybody's shut in now. So I know. What am I thinking? Folks, if you're interested, we are going for October. I, you want to do a book cast? Let's make it a book cast. Mm. We're going to be reading, if Spencer ever gets to it, Dracula. Fuck you, man. Count Dracula. The original Bram Stoker Dracula, hey, by the way. At least I finished the, the last book we were supposed to do for the, for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, kudos to you. So Dracula will do it as a book cast series. So we'll do, let's say, um, it's broken down into journals. Uh, you, so we could do each person's journal, maybe. Like the one guy, it's like three or four chapters is his journal, and then there's like some other people. So we'll break it down like that. Uh, check the website, which is drunkapenwriting dot com. We will have that on there at some point when we make it official. Uh, you can look at Twitter. We're on there at Drunk Pen Writing. We post things sometimes. We actually been posting a lot of stuff on the site lately. So if you follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, which is also drunk and pen writing. You can find, you know, the things we post because we share them. And then Instagram, we don't. We just share pictures of butts, stall butts. That's at drunk and pen writing. Um, They're gonna be so disappointed when they go and there's no butts. The butts are limited time stories, so you <laughs> have to be specific to when you look. <laughs> they, they, it's like Snapchat. They're only there for five seconds, and then I delete them. Also, there are butts. <laughs> so you're welcome. And they're always wet. 